So our third value is we are blown by the Spirit. John 3 and verse 8 says, The Spirit breathes where he will, and you hear his voice, but you do not work, know where he comes from or where he goes. Thus is everyone who is born of the Spirit. In times of crisis, it's natural for us to turn to God and ask that he send a fresh move of his Holy Spirit to transform the church and our world. Revivals always seem to upset those who crave constancy because God raises up people who don't fit the norm. Maybe like you, maybe like me even. And sometimes as a result of revival, worship becomes exuberant and people get offended by that. The critics, and there are many, cite Paul's letter to the Corinthians and 1 Corinthians 14, 40, that says, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. People falling about under the power of the Spirit, shouting, a service without structure, they say, how can this be ordered? On the other side of the argument, there are those who look at the account of the first Pentecost, when the disciples were accused of being drunk, or other revivals over the last 300 years where strange manifestations occur. Whatever your view, Scripture teaches us that without God's Holy Spirit in working in and through us, we can achieve nothing of significance. Too many people, even those professing Christ as Lord, trust in their own strength and in their own resources and not in the power of the Holy Spirit. Some even shun a move of the Spirit because anything slightly weird or out of the ordinary might be a stumbling block for people. You know, the Bible is full of eyewitness accounts of the weirdness of Holy Spirit encounters. The dead were raised. The lame went walking and leaping. The demon-possessed were released. And thousands queued up to get into the church in one day. The Holy Spirit cannot be controlled. That means, quite frankly, we are not in control. The Holy Spirit is. And when we lose control, I think that's what sometimes makes us uncomfortable. The message of 1 Corinthians 14.40 is that our enthusiasm and our excitement over signs and wonders is not the goal of a Holy Spirit encounter. What is a changed lives and a changed society? Of course, order, as we see in that, it's not our kind of order, it's God's kind of order. As a church at Farmwood Baptist Church, we put a high value on Holy Spirit encounter. I know that in all of our gatherings, even through our online presence, people encounter God in a tangible way and their lives are transformed. I really do want to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit here in Farmwood. But not just for an encounter, not just for a nice warm feeling, but for real transformation. Some of those critics of revival are worried about following merely hype. But my greatest fear is that communities continue to fall apart and we are powerless to stop it. We pray every week that our work in the community will do more than get the unemployment unemployed a job and the hungry fed. If it means God needs to shake us up and force, of out, force us out of our comfort zones so that the greater goal of our lives and communities are transformed, then it's well worth it. So be blown by the Spirit today.